I don't know any of this, but I've been in contact with extraterrestrial um, intelligences, and uh, and 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 the human race. We are we are not gonna make it, guys. We are not gonna make it. This is like impending doom here. Okay, like this, yeah. this catastrophic climate changes. Oh yeah. God, we're all gonna die. We're all gonna die. This is not good. Yeah, I've uh, I've seen enough. Yeah, well, it goes on like this for seven more minutes. Obviously, you can see why it's caused quite a stir in the office. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Broker told her to take an indefinite leave of absence. Well, her entire vibe is an indefinite leave of absence. This latest relapse all started at the Smithsonian Zoo. Yeah, it it was triggering. Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out and see if I can find. I I, I get worried. Of course. Oh hey. You all right? Hey, girlfriend! Oh, are you loving your time off or what? Yes! Look what I have all the time to do now! Are you for real, girl? She has a professional appointment, right? Yeah, yeah, she, she has one this afternoon. So this was your first time ever seeing this intelligence? Yeah. Um, but not not the first time with the, the levitation or the, uh, the full body paralysis. Um, but it was it was the first time I saw her. And and I know she's probably not real. But she seemed so real. Of course. I mean, I, I was in the living room on the couch watching TV and, and Alan was in the in the bedroom asleep. And and it's like my whole body was asleep, but my my mind was awake, you know. Yeah. This is a well known state of semi consciousness. Well then I just like started like levitating. So from this telepathic connection, you were able to clearly discern the extraterrestrial's message for humanity. Well, that, that sounds crazy. We don't use that word. I'm pretty sure my coworkers did. Um, you know, but just statistically speaking, you know, even if this isn't real, there's got to be some sort of existential extraterrestrial life somewhere out there, right? Well, it seems likely, but in terms of close encounters on Earth, I'm a bit of a skeptic. In a Mulder-Scully dynamic, I'm a Scully. 
So it's a it's hallucination. That's a sign of a serious sickness. It's certainly not a sign of psychosis, especially given your history of somnambulism. Huh. I do know a little something about ufology and close encounters. Are you familiar with the case of Barney and Betty Hill? Is that the horny doctor that that ran around chasing nurses to some kind of weird fast-forwarded saxophone music? No, that's Benny Hill. Oh. The hills I'm talking about were on a road trip in the 1960s. They woke up on the side of the road with temporary amnesia and a span of missing time. In the course of therapy, Barney Hill remembered a terrifying abduction experience with gray-skinned aliens with big black eyes. He recovered the experience during hypnosis. In a hypnotic state, people are very suggestible. Even Freud, who was a major proponent of the therapeutic necessity of hypnosis and the treatment of traumatic hysteria, believed he could powerfully suggest ideas and behaviors to patients in that state. Hypnosis and um, genital massage were his approach to hysterical disorders. Well, that's kind of freaky. Should we try that one? The modern psychiatric community frowns upon the happy ending approach to therapy. But, but think of all the money you could make. <laughs> Everything go well at your session today? With the exception of... Uh... Not making it to third base with Dr. Kevorkian? Okay, it's Dr. Zakharkov. And yes, it was good. She made me feel a little less crazy after that whole alien encounter thing. I gotta be honest, I don't think that there's anything crazy about meeting aliens. They do walk amongst us. Oh, shut up. They do not. You may even be friends with one or two of them. As a matter of fact, you may even be dating one. I hate you. Well, I love you. So you should come with me to the world of Maglodorf. And we can create a race of hybrid human and take over all of the galaxies, galaxies, galaxies. Das Würstlein blieb beim Hafen, sah zu, dass die Speise wohl kochte. Und wenn es bald Essenszeit war, schlingte es sich einmal Tiere durch den Brei oder das Gemüs. So war es geschmolzen, gesalzen und bereitet. Now, my paranormal activity esque beauty. You will only hear the sound of my voice. I want you to close your eyes. What was it about the Smithsonian that triggered you so bad? The elephant shrew. Ah, yes, yes, the shrews. 
now. But why? Uh, the shrews. They, they scurry. They scurry around and then they stop. They stay and chew with their black, peaty little alien eyes. And then, and then they wiggle their sticky little noses at you. And then they scurry some more. They get off of you. 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 Interesting. Very interesting. No, it was wild. But she really seemed to believe that the shrews were coming after. And I don't mean the, the 1959, the killer shrews. I'm talking about the, uh, the little furry, cute, adorable creatures. Yeah. I mean, you could just get rid of the creepy cat clock. No, 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 I don't want to. I mean, look, I know that I'm not a professional and that I may even be doing irrevocable damages to Nancy's psyche, but... She hasn't opened up to me in a meaningful way in forever, and I kind of just want to see what uh, what I can get out of this. Uh, I don't know. It seems kind of risky. Risque is my middle name. <laughs> you are hopeless. What's so horrible about the Nutcracker? Most small girls, they love the Nutcracker. Oh, I loved the girl Clara. She was sympathetic. But then that, that horrifying mouse king with the floppy, wiggly fingers and all the head and the teeth. Bulge and plate tiles. Knives. <gasps> Whoa. Oh my god, okay. Take your time. And he took down his swim trunks and he showed me. than me and I just I just kind of stood there and stared at it and I kind of shut down and finally he pulled his trucks up and he scurried out of the boathouse is that it? oh and then and then that night it was it was cold so I slept with my sleeping bag over my head and I heard him rustling and walking around like a, like a waking nightmare. And I knew, I knew it was him and I froze. And he stopped and it took forever. And it was creeping. And finally, I heard the zipper of my tent. Uh, I thought something horrible was going to happen. And a pickaxe on my face or a boot boot to my head and then and then he did it he threw a mouse trap with a live mouse inside my sleeping bag and he got on it to shut the bag closed and it's in there with me and, and that mouse scurrying 
around and feeling his little paws on me and little teeth biting me out, thrashing, thrashing around. And then finally, finally I rolled over onto it and I crushed it. And then, and then? And I could feel the soft, warm, furry little body under That was him. And then everybody came with flashlights. They asked what was wrong and what happened. And I said that a field mouse got into my sleeping bag. I didn't, I didn't tell anyone it was Brandon. I didn't tell anyone about that. I think, I think I forgot. Ever. Oh, you're still awake. Oh, it's late. We should, we should go to bed. Yeah, baby. Let's go to bed. Mysteries are found Aliens dance with the cosmic sound Under moonlight where dreams abound Hypnosis whispers soft lullabies Past lives and secrets in their eyes Stars align in the velvet skies With every swing we question why Mind games and cosmic trains Echoes of Freud in distant lanes Hypnotic tales in alien frames We ride these nocturnal